Hello and welcome to Hacks, where I try to simplify cybersecurity. Today we are looking at the realistic missions on Hack This Site. If you don't know what Hack This Site is, it's a website that allows you to test out your hacking skills. It's got a number of challenges ranging from basic all the way through to IRC missions. I've already completed all the basic missions, so feel free to look through my channel for those, but today we are looking at the realistic ones. We are taking on number two today, Chicago American Nazi Party. Racist pigs are organizing an anti-immigration rally in Chicago. Help anti-racist activists take over their website. Absolutely. I, I want to do this. So, we've got a message from Destroy Fascism. I have been informed that you have quite admirable hacking skills. Well, this racist hate group is using their website to organize a mass gathering of ignorant racist bastards. We cannot allow such bigoted aggression to happen. If you gain access to their administrator page and post a message to their main page, we would be eternally grateful. I would love to do this. Let's go and have a look at their website. So, as you can see, it's a fairly basic website. Something to note is these images do actually link back to an actual Nazi website by the looks of things. Got a logo there and you've got join the American Nazi party fight for white power. No ta. So they're organising their meeting on July 18th. Other than that, the site doesn't appear to have a lot of functionality. There's no links to click, it's just a basic site. So, in order to progress further, let's take a look at the source and see what's going on. As you can see here, it's just got the structure of the website, but if we come down to the bottom, you can see the links to the American Nazi Party, which we won't visit, but you can also see this update.php. Now, I assume that the page we're currently on is going to be index.html or index.php. So this page is going to be something else. So if we grab that and have a little wander and see what that page is. Lovely. So we can see we have a login page. Now, to me, this suggests we're either going to have to brute force the page or there's going to be some sort of SQL vulnerability that allows us to bypass authentication. In order to check for uh, SQL vulnerabilities, what we can do is use the uh, single quotation mark. So, for instance, if we just use admin and we use the single quotation mark and let's just do the same in the password, if the site's vulnerable to SQL injection, what we should find is that the site produces an SQL error. Well, the SQL server produces an SQL error. Because what's happening is, is the single quotation mark is escaping the SQL query. So, anything after that, if we put gibberish, it shouldn't be able to understand what we're trying to tell it, and it should produce an error. So if we click submit, you can see there we get an SQL error. Now the reason this is, again, is because the site isn't using prepared statements. And what a prepared statement is, is it uses a placeholder for the SQL query that you want to run. So you'll have your script and it will have a mention of SQL with the question mark. And then somewhere else in the document, you'll actually have the SQL query. And the reason why they do this is to prevent the SQL query from being escaped. Because right now, this single quotation mark is acting as an escape for SQL. So what we can do is, is we're saying admin, single quotation mark, or one equals one, space, hyphen, hyphen, space. Uh, you should put a space after it. I believe that the server can have trouble interpreting the syntax if you don't. So what this is saying is, is login as admin, escape the SQL query, and run our own SQL query. That is a sort of true logic. So it's saying all one equals one. And because one equals one is true, it should allow us to bypass authentication. So in the password box, let's do the same admin or one equals one hyphen hyphen space now if we click submit this should hopefully bypass the authentication page because it's using this logic here which is true and it should bypass authentication let's have a look 
<laughs> and as you can see, we've now completed the challenge. So that was a really fun challenge, and I like the fact that the realistic web applications actually appear to link to external applications. It makes it more immersive, and when you're doing the basic challenge, there wasn't that level of immersion there. It was still fun, and you still learn a lot, but it's nice to actually look at a website and believe it's real and that you're going to hack it, especially when it's scumbags like the Nazis. So what can be learnt from this lesson? Well, if you're building a web application that relies on an SQL backend, then you should absolutely be using prepared statements. Prepared statements prevent SQL queries from being escaped, meaning that you can no longer append the query with your own query that would allow you to bypass authentication. SQL queries are SQL injection is like hacking 101. Being able to do basic SQL is an essential skill. Well, basic SQL injections is an essential skill. There are more complex SQL injections like unions, um, time-based attacks, blind attacks. And yeah, they're more difficult. Um, there's a great lab over on Portswigger which walks you through the all, all the different types of SQL injection and how they can be detected and how you can do them, which I would highly recommend testing out. And it's probably going to be something that I test out later on uh, on the on the on the blog but anyway i'm rambling on um yes use prepared statements in your web applications to prevent sql injections i hope you like this video if you do give me a thumbs up possibly the subscribe and i will see you next time for the next realistic mission thanks bye please hang up and try again